Hi everybody, today we're going to be emasculating a plant root, that means removing its pollens and doing so in a way that makes it so that the stigma does not get covered in pollen. As you can see I've already been emasculating this plant and all of the flowers previously had these, these plastic things on them. It's just a piece of straw, pretty simple. Uh, as you can see I'm doing this indoors which means there is no wind movement so I can have both sides of the straw open. If you're doing this outdoors you really want to get the, close the straw and to do that you just heat the straw up and pinch it closed. You can do that with the set of tweezers you're using, anything, as long as you, you know, I just use a, a Bic lighter and, and the tweezers and close it off. Anyhow, as you can see this plant's already in full bloom. You really want to be doing this when the flowers are more like this, when the flowers are just opening. And the reason for that is when the flowers are closed so are the pollens for the most part. And we have some plants around here where the pollens open before the flowers do and we have some plants where the pollens are really large and, the, and they don't open until much later than the flowers. In any case, even if you're at this point, you can still emasculate the flower and, and make sure that it doesn't self-pollinate itself. And the reason for that is really simple. As you can see, uh, hopefully, the stigma here is very far from the, from the pollens. And that's the case with most clivia. The, the stigma is longer than the pollens. So it's really easy to do this. You just take your, your, you take your straw, you put it over the stigma, and with a little twist, you make sure that, that it's being held in there with some pressure, with pressure. The flower will hold it in place. And you do that over and over again until you've covered all your flowers, which, you know, in a case like this beauty, where there's 20 or 30 flowers, can be quite a few flowers. Uh, you want your straws to be about two and a half to three inches long. And the reason for that is that you want the straw to be quite a bit longer than the pollens. That way, the pollens uh, really can't get in this end of the straw. It's really simple. So you saw how easy that was. And, you, know, you do that to all the open flowers. There are a couple exceptions. Now you may have seen me just put that around the pollen as well on this one. Now if you do this, if you go through the pollen, you're done. That's a self flower. Just assume your, your flower, that one's self. Because the minute you put the pollen inside the straw, pollen's microscopic. That pollen's in there and you've already most likely you know, may give yourself about a 50% chance you've already pollinated that flower. The minute you go and pull the straw back out, you probably pollinated the flower. So you don't you don't do anything else with that one. You just assume it's self-pollination, which is very simple. So now we'll use that for that flower to show you how to self-pollinate, which is really easy. Um, some of the things I wanted to show you on this this flower plant has uh, a nice multi-petal flower, just one. But you can see on the multi-petal flower, let me make sure you can see that, that it has multiple pollens. That's right here, the multi-petal flower. And you can see one of these pollens is brown. That pollen is dead. There's really nothing you can do about that one. And the other thing I wanted to show you is down below here. You may or may not be able to see this. I'm going to try to zoom in on it. Uh, hopefully this camera will give you what I'm trying, what I am seeing. Here we go. You may notice that this particular flower, the stigma's way inside here. It's not outside like the other flowers. And, and the reason for that, if, if, you have, if you were here in real life and maybe hopefully on the camera, you can see that has a brown tip on it. It's very much dead. So you, this is not worth pollinating at all. You can still take the pollens, and I'm going to, and you can still use the pollens because the pollens are alive. But that flower doesn't need to have a plastic thing on it for any, re for any reason because it's not going to pollinate in any way, shape, or form. So it's not worth your time. So again, and you see something brown, it's, it's going to be useless to you. Don't bother with dealing with it. You're going to pull it off to throw it away just to make the plant look clean, but you're not going to be able to pollinate with it. So let's go ahead and pull some, pull some pollens. Obviously, you guys can't see anything. Let me pull this out a bit. All right, let's pull some of these pollens. I'll show you how to do that. It's really, really simple. You're going to be storing your pollens in a matchbox. You can store them in like this pollen tube that I use. Pretty much anything. You take a pair of tweezers. I like pointed tweezers. You can see this is a nice pair of pointed tweezers. We actually have some really, really uh, pretty tweezers coming, which you don't need. These are 30 cent tweezers. Uh, you don't want to see any pollen on these from previous pullings if possible. It doesn't really you can get pollen on your on your tweezers from this pulling. That doesn't really matter. You're going to be 
putting your tweezers in an autoclave, or if you don't have an autoclave, you're going to be setting them in an, in an oven at 350 for about 10 minutes to kill anything that's on the, on the tweezers. So you don't want rubber grip tweezers, you want a pair of metal tweezers because the metal will not melt. And when you're done, of course, you'll have a wonderful roast. Oh, wait a minute, I mean tweezers. Nice, sterile tweezers. So it's easy. You just go in here, you take down about to there, and you pull it off. And you hold the, you hold the straw in place when you're done. Hopefully I did that so you can see it. Then, you put your, your, the end of the pollen here. You don't need any of this anther. It's useless to you. You remove that. And the reason you remove it is that when you freeze this, this anther is just going to turn to goop. It's going to make it so your pollens don't stay as long. So you remove as much of the anther as you can. And you just repeat that process over and over until you're done. It may look like I'm hurting the plant. I'm really not. Uh, this does tend to shorten the lifespan of the flower when you do this. Because it isn't, you know, you're not being super nice to the flower. You're pushing it open, you're prodding it, you're popping it. But in the end, you're getting what you need from the flower. You're keeping this, you're keeping the sterile, the part you need to keep sterile, sterile, and you're removing the part that's valuable for you. It's up to six years frozen. That's the pollen. And that's the whole thing. You've seen it. You just do that over and over again until you're done. I hope this video has been useful for you guys.